I'm here at uh, KLM Cargo, and I'm talking to uh, Kester Meyer. And Kester Meyer is director of cargo, and what's your responsibility? So I'm responsible for uh, compliance and safety, and I want to be the best uh, one in the world. You compete on compliance, right? I mean, that sounds really weird. Why? Yeah, it's, a, it's an advantage. If you are the best at compliance, uh, we are air cargo, so our customers pay us for speed. Uh, they want the, uh, the cargo as quickly as possible to the other side of the planet somewhere. and uh, compli You want fast planes. Exactly. And, uh, but no, but it can be stopped. Uh, so actually, the difference is made on the ground. Mm. And if you run into all kind of customs or security, safety, food healthy, uh, health uh, stuff, then it will stop. Yeah. We're going to talk about blockchain and blockchain. why blockchain is important for cargo or how you're going to use it to compete with legal. So be before we talk about the blockchain, I mean, how complex is your world? If you get a package from A to B, what kind of parties basically you know, make your life miserable? Actually, the complexity of the number of participants in the supply chain, if you look at, for instance, a pharmaceutical shipment, it can be between seven to 15 handovers between entities. And I think that makes it complex with uh, a wide variety of IT systems, procedures, uh, people have different training level, and of course, uh, the, the national, the territory you are, the member state has different rules. Yeah. And uh, so we have a lot of rules in our database, over three and a half thousand rules and restrictions. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's totally impossible for any human uh, to comprehend and to uh, and to comply with all those rules at the same time. If so you don't comply, how much uh, consequences does that have? It can be huge. It can put your company out of business, to be uh, very put it simple. Yeah. You said that uh, in America they now have uh, all kinds of strategies to basically influence trade and they put huge amount of companies every day on, on, an, on a list, on, an, on a blacklist, right? Well, it's, it's called the sanction list, sanctioned party entity list, and we're not allowed to transport goods that, that originate or have anything to do with these uh, parties entity so we need to check uh, all that before we take it on board yeah, and that's tenth of new entries yes. every day uh, kind of 30 per week so it can be on one day 20 or 10 and then another day five but yeah. on average 30 per week and it's only the US. yeah and that's, and that's extremely if that doesn't work then you have a huge problem so and custom uh, of course we have Europe and Britain and the brexit and China and America and having quarrels and that kind of stuff it is really it influences your life every day yes every day is different it, it's continuous change mm -hmm. And you must be prepared for that and, and it must be possible for our people uh, to do their work in a proper way every day. So how, how do you take this complexity and bring it back to a, actually a very simple traffic light? Mm -hmm. and, and how do you make sure that the data is reliable and that you understand all the permits are there? Yeah. So and in all modesty, you think that KLM Cargo is the best in the world? Yes, I'm very modest and I know we are the best uh, because... Uh, well, I, I think the best is that we integrate and we innovate on this topic. So you can be very defensive on the topic of compliance, but we said no. We need to stay ahead of the game. It's, it's like when you build a sandcastle and a big wave comes and it will blow away your sandcastle, right? So we need to be prepared for the wave of change. Uh, look at what's happening in the world today on a global scale. It is very, there's a lot of turmoil in the world. And it changes every day for us, the, the conditions. Yeah. So the physical movement of goods is not so important anymore. It's the rules and regulations and the governments and the security and that kind of stuff. Well, you have a very interesting, uh, interesting paper describing all the challenges uh, you have and how basically blockchain can uh, fit in there. So tell me about uh, the, the challenges you have. I mean, wh what you describe here on this uh, paper. So the variety of goods is huge and so I think in cargo you have at least 30 types of documents and permits and it's not like a passenger who has just a ticket and a visa. The second one is that the data is very siloed. Uh, we are the man in the middle actually. We are not the producer, the manufacturer, we're not the shipper, we're not the freight forwarder. We just do part of moving the goods and then we have to hand it back and it has to come maybe to a patient or a consumer. Yeah. So, the, so there's a lot of entities who touch the data uh, I, I call it a bit uh, with a wink and an order. I call it a ten finger fuck up because when people are are typing, uh, they make mistakes. Oh, yeah. You said there was one little type uh, typo, and a, a guy in Germany made what was the typo? Yeah, so he had to enter the three letter IATA code for an airfield, and he didn't know what it was, so he made something up, and it turned out to be a, an air base in Iran, a military base. So that was kind of a no no. It went to America exactly, and they went, you know, everything went on red and hold 
hold and stop and what are you doing. Uh, so yeah, so a very small mistake. So a small typo can make a huge difference. Yes. Okay. Yes. So then you have, of course, we know customs and all these freight forwarders uh, in there. Um, competitiveness, uh, who is that for? Is that for the government or is that for your clients or is that for... Uh well, I think it's both because uh, we want a safe flight for passengers, crew and, and the cargo and the government wants a safe territorium so the country must be kept safe so i think we have the same interest here uh, what are the goods that are coming to into the country uh, and uh, what are the goods that are leaving yeah you have an incredible i mean i you, you showed me some pictures of how products uh, get into a pallet and, yeah. and get into i mean and you have also the judge who says that you have a not a right to investigate but a duty to investigate right exactly exactly we had one shipment where we did not have a transit license um, and so Dutch Customs stopped it and, uh, and we were taken to court on this one. We didn't like that by the way um, but the judge said well look you have as a, as a professional transport service provider the duty to investigate what's on board so know what you transport uh, look at it as early as possible and in doubt do not move it so no is no. Yeah. The, you, the Dutch Customs are they easy to operate? Uh, they're watching, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, but how t how tough are, is the Dutch customs? They, I think, in the European context, they are one of the most tough uh, enforcement agencies that we encounter. Mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, they are trying to be protective of, of what's happening here. Um, so yes, they have two hats. They have a facilitation hat where we have dialogue and they have the enforcement hat where they say, look, you know what the rules are and the judge has confirmed, uh, when in doubt, do not move it. Basically the, way, the same role you have inside KLM. Exactly. So I do the same here. So I talk to colleagues, they say, can we move this? And I say, well, yeah, uh, let me look at it. Yes, it's okay. Or no, don't do it. And when they do it, when I've said no, I enforce. And uh, Okay. So before we develop blockchain, one thing about cargo, what percentage of uh, cargo goes through the air? So of global trade, it's 1% in volume and kilos, yeah. uh, but it's 35% in terms of financial value. Yeah. Okay, so it's extremely, it, it's military stuff, medicine, it's consumer goods, it's flowers, it's everything. It's 35% of all the world value basically yeah. goes for you. Yeah. Okay, how can blockchain help with this mess? Well, I think the most important part is that we understand that the data is authentic, that we can trust the data. I think this is the biggest problem I have today uh, I cannot trust the data always, or it's not complete, or it's too late, uh, and then I cannot do the risk assessment from the compliance point of view. Mm -hmm. So blockchain can help me there in a, in a huge way. Um, and you can basically verify it's real. If you have a document, I have a PDF, yes. there's a signature on the blockchain, and then everybody who has that PDF can say, oh, it's real, it's made by blah, blah, blah. So you don't have to give the PDF to everybody, but you can have the verification of the PDF to everybody. So it's like a traffic light. If, if I, if I can see that the documents came from the manufacturer I don't need all the details I just understand this is the producer of the in my example pharmaceuticals is coming from the genuine uh, manufacturing plant that's okay I don't need all the commercial information I don't even want all that information red light green light orange light orange light yes orange is doubt we need to look into it but red is do not move or it's not genuine so do not move green is it's okay and I would love if the green light would come both from my customer but also from the uh, enforcement agency like Customs, yeah. because that would be a really a big win, the public-private cooperation. If the custom also could have a, an orange light and a, br and a green light and a red light and basically do all... Of course, you are in that business because a lot of it is sent uh, preemptive to uh, to other to Customs yeah. and they say yes or no, yeah. but you want that on a blockchain so that you can have an audit trail that all these green, orange, uh, red lights and verifications are on there. Yes, exactly. And then... The the other the benefit is for our customer for us but also for customs they don't have to look into it so we can they can it's like instant clearance of the goods so i can move it to the next stage instead of holding it for 24 hours which in case of fresh flowers will degrade the product or medicine might not be treated well so we have to throw it away yeah. so uh, yeah there's a lot of other uh, benefits from blockchain yeah. 
You say you live in the world of 50%. Eh? 50% yes. of the medicine is thrown away. Yeah. It doesn't reach the patient, let's put it that way. So from manufacturing to the patient, I think about 50%, 50% is thrown away yeah. because of it didn't meet conditions or we cannot prove the uh, the provenance of, of the medicine. Because 40% of the medicines are false. In Africa, 40% is is counterfeit medicine. Um, it's, it's being used by the criminals to make money. The money goes to terrorism organizations who try uh, to put a bomb on board of an airplane so the circle full closer okay so that's with medicine but with flowers uh, with, with flowers the amount of time of effective time you can enjoy the flowers is also a lot different in be depending on the flow eh? yeah exactly so let's say flowers come from Africa here into Amsterdam and it goes to a Dutch uh, house in the end it maybe you will have seven days that you can enjoy the flowers but if it has to move on to Scandinavia it can degrade into maybe three days so the conditions of transport are extremely important yeah. we have a lot of IOT kind of solutions but they are often siloed and, and we need to open that up to one another so we can it's one of the green lights and uh, or would be has this temperature be okay yeah green light you don't need to know everything and then somebody based on that green light can then see the underlying document but you don't you only want the green light yes I want I want the green lights yeah. uh, I love green lights yeah so green <laughs> so blockchain is a very is, is a whole is a whole strategy of green and orange and, and red lights and, and verification of documents yeah. that they are real. Yeah, and so you don't get uh, the false positives, for instance, that, that you have to stop a green light. You don't want that. Uh, so as long as it's green, it keeps on moving as quickly as possible to the final customer. Okay. So how are you going to basically, you're, you're defining a challenge now. Uh, what, uh, what kind of things do you want, uh, what kind of parties do you want to integrate? Who is the, uh, first the challenge, who do you do it with? Uh, who are the, free, the partners in the challenge? Yeah, so my stakeholders are uh, MSD, a uh, big pharmaceutical company, and and then the freight forwarder is uh, DHL Global Forwarding, DGF uh, we call them. And then obviously uh, KLM Cargo and Air France Cargo are also uh, part of this. Mm -hmm. Also part very important is our IT departments because from the supply chain side we can say we want this. But if our IT people say, oh, what is this? No, no, they are part of our challenge. What's the name of that? The IT department is called, or Fr Air France is called? Yeah, it's, it's Air France IT and the Information Management Office. So so it's an internal department, but, yeah. but they are really part of my challenge. I, I think it's, we as business uh, cannot do without IT. Yeah. And, yeah, and they need to open up. And that's also your background, right? I mean, you went from data movement to uh, to basically cargo movement, and then you're going back with cargo that, that digital is again the most important. Yeah, it's, it's like uh, to synthesize every experience I've had in my 30 years at KLM, bring it together uh, in a solution that's good for, for ourselves and for our customers. Yeah. And and so so the challenge is with these, these three people, maybe even a road feeder, but more important also Dutch customs will join our challenge, uh, very important for us. Um, there will be five teams that will be selected to uh, build, first of all, a protocol uh, level, so for exchanging these traffic lights and the basic data, um, and, and granting or revoking access to those who are allowed uh, to access uh, data, mm -hmm. because trust is another very important uh, yeah. fact here in, in, in our industry. It's everything. I mean, if you don't have trust and if the yeah. custom says you're out, then your company can go back uh, bankrupt. Yeah. and and. Uh, Today, uh, many parties say, I do not want to give you access to my commercial information. And to be honest, from a compliance point of view, I don't want access. No. I don't need it. No. You want a green light. I want a green light, yeah. again. But having only a protocol is not a solution in itself. You know, it's like the internet or email or TCP IP. So on top of the, uh, the solution, uh, the protocol solution, I want one uh, application, which is on the pharmaceuticals. Once that is successful, I can then build into other areas like the flowers whom you mentioned and, and the luxury goods, for instance, with Chanel or, or with Harma or Daimler, those kind of uh, uh, producers. Yeah. Okay. So um, you're starting this. I mean, uh, KLM has been active and Cargo has been active uh, with blockchain for a number of, of years to go to product. How long will this take before this has uh, it makes uh, before you have a green light? Um, well, actually, we already with old-fashioned IT have a, have a green light system uh, in-house now, and we are expanding it to some of our partners, like for instance Delta Airlines uh, will uh, partake in this. Um, and then I think the biggest markets are for me the most important. So Europe, uh, 
and then the America. So I'm also seeing if I can get the, the US Customs Border Protection uh, involved mm -hmm. and we will grow it. So I think maybe looking at a timeline of three to five years for the most important markets. Yeah, and it's not, I mean, it's not a KLM thing. I mean, it, no, like no, you say, no, it should no. be a Delta. On what level, on how can you basically go to a wider and wider group? I mean, you now have DHL and you have KLM and you're gonna... Well, but it's, it's to identify actually, uh, as we call it, ecosystems. So KLM Cargo is part of the Dutch Flower Alliance, the Holland Flower Alliance. Actually, it's very interesting because there you already have parties, entities that are willing to work together, who are putting resources into the game. Mm -hmm. And so if we have this solution, we could take actually this to uh, to the Holland Flower Alliance already and say, okay, let's, let's do it together. Because I, I think they want to work together and I think that's very important. That's a precondition. But when they want to work together, hey, let's do it. Yeah. In the um, container business, the cost of digital is about uh, one third to 40% of the cost of the physical uh, transport. How, how is that in your business? Oh, in, in terms of cost, I think uh, what you see is in our industry, there's a lot of legacy still. So the cost is even higher uh, today because we are replacing legacy. Um, so, so yeah, the digital is huge, but we are investing. We are leading mm -hmm. uh, also as Air France KLM. Today, we are spending a lot of money on APIs, doing host to host, but I do think that blockchain is the next level after that. Uh, so once we have that in place, more reliability, uh, we'll do that. It would solve all world problems in peace and, and harmony and uh, human rights and that's it. Uh, now we're in a uh, more blockchain winter, everybody's getting back to basics, what does it do? Uh, wh what is your take on that? Uh, you still seem to be enthusiastic. Yes, I'm very enthusiastic because it solves problems uh, it has some unique characteristics, as, as you mentioned, like the, prove the provenance of the goods, prove that the document is, is okay, has been validated. Uh, these are things that today uh, are not yet available with, with today's contemporary IT. Why? Because you have an IT system which basically has green light and, and, and red light. What makes blockchain then different to make it easy to work together? Is it easier to open up, to get other people access or to have limited access? Well, what is yes. the advantage of blockchain? Well, I, I was also uh, part of the EU IPO uh, blockathon uh, about intellectual property and what we saw there is there's a lot of data in the police uh, databases in customs databases that we do not have access to uh, because they will say yeah but if we give you access you can know how to circumvent it so I say to them well what if I give you my data you do the risk validation the risk profiling give me back this traffic light again and, and then it will make it more safe and secure. Yeah. So, so I think it builds stronger institutions, it, it builds new infrastructures instead of trying to reshape old infrastructures. Yeah. So basically you want to share uh, not data, but, uh, but red and green and orange lights. And that already is a huge progress and, and blockchain allows you to open it up to a much wider group of parties. Yeah, and, and we, we all keep focusing on our key competence. For me, transporting goods, for customs looking at risk and profiling and sharing the outcome of our key competence in such a way to make it safer and, and or even better for patients uh, in, in medicine and health uh, solutions. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you. For that. And good luck with the challenge. Yeah. We're going to see what uh, we're probably going to talk about at uh, the Blockchain Innovation Conference on uh, June the 30th at the results, but uh, where you are, because I think this is really uh, a lot of people have a very complex uh, you know, workflow. And, yeah. and basically, to verify and work together is really what we're going to do. Thank you. Thank you, Vincent. Okay.